Well, I got a package in the mail, and my wife said, well, why are you taking the camera out? And I tried to explain to her that it was a bow, and we guys are kind of funny like that. Uh, like a, It's like Easter for us all over again when we were about uh, 10 or 12 years old. She didn't understand. But I assured her that all you guys out there would. This uh, should be a Fox Triple Crown made by uh, Ron King. I've wanted uh, one of Ron's bows for a long time. They're about as reputable as they come. And, uh, you know, with the new NFAA Longbow class next year, I thought, uh, you know, what better excuse do I need than to, uh, to buy a Longbow than a new class to motivate me to get there. And we were shooting for a round, um, for a good fill bow. I hope to go down and join the guys uh, next year at the uh, North American, or this year actually, this December, North American field shoot. And wanted a, uh, I've got some long bows, but they're either hunting weight or they're self bows. And so I um, wanted a bow that'd be good for field. And, um, So I asked Ron back in January if he could fit me in, and he did, of course, and here we are. All right. Oh, that's a beauty. Custom made by Ryan King for Jimmy Blackman. 43 at 28, 68 inches long. That is a beauty. Cocobolo and uh, Micarta. I don't know if you put knocking points on it or not. If you want to do a how-to video with uh, kind of setting that up here today anyway. Man, what a, what a beautiful bow. There's a brass knocking point. Just incredible work. Uh, I tell you, he's an artist, it really is. There she is, unstrung. I got the high wristed grip. Just a beautiful, beautiful bow. In the middle of the riser. It's uh, bamboo on the belly there. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you how I begin set up since uh, I got the bow here new. It's a great time. Um, one thing, um, I'm going to set it up for shooting 3D, not field. When I begin shooting field, uh, this year, then I'll, I'll totally set it up different because in the NFAA and IFAA, you got to shoot split finger, and I want a lower knocking point to get a further point on. But for 3D, I want to reduce that point. So I'm going to begin uh, my knocking point at 5 8 and see how the arrows fly. Also, the strike plate here uh, is well above the arrow, so I always measure that. So if the arrows land here and uh, IBO, it can only be the top of the strike plate. It can't be more than one inch above the arrow, so I'll lay that there. It's actually exactly one inch, so I'm good with this strike plate. If not, I'd have to change that. Um, this is this just works out just about right there. You know, top of the arrow, the top of the strike plate, it's just under an inch, so the strike plate's good to go. Um, it's an eighth out of center, that's the way the bow was made, so I'm good to go there for longbow for uh, the um, IBO. Now, the brass knocking point, I'm going to take that off. I just don't um, 
prefer these. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. But um, I, I like to tie my knocks on, but I'm going to show you a little trick. There's a lot of ways to set up when you're, when you're testing. Guys will say, well, I'm tearing my string up trying to figure out where to knock. And that, yeah, you're not the only one. Um, so a good way, or your center serving, and, and a good way to, to do that without tearing it up is to use masking tape. You can easily move masking tape up and down and it uh, doesn't do anything to your string. And then when you finally get ready you know where you want it, where you want to set your knocking point, you just take the top one off, tie your uh, string on, tie your knocking point on, and take the bottom one off, tie it on, and you're set. They're easy to move. So I always just get my uh, get my bowyer square set right lightly on the shelf right there, right where I need it to be on the shelf. Then we'll go here and look. There's, there's center, and then one, two, three, four, there's five eighths. So 5 8 is marked because I use it quite frequently. So I'm just going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to stick it through between the bowyer square and the string. You can use thinner tape. It might be uh, easier to use. Now you want to go above that since you're going to, that's going to be where the center of the knock is. And then just pull that tape over and then get it going around. Now you can move this. And this looks ugly at the top, but that's doesn't matter it's it's just temporary so twist that around your string there now you're going to leave room plenty of room for your knock to fit depending on what size knocks you use I'm using these wood arrow knocks so one thing a common mistake folks make is they'll tie this one on right up next to it and not give a good gap you got to remember that when you put angle a string angle in at anchor uh, that knock is going to reduce the size of this gap when it naturally moves up. So you need to provide adequate space in there um, for that knock to do that. Uh, a good way to do that is to get someone to watch you when you're um, when you're at anchor to see if your knock has plenty of room or not. Or you can look in the mirror. But uh, another way is just after you tie them on for a while, you get used to knowing about how much to leave. Now, right there is where we are. That's a little bit firm, but those will, it's a brand new string, so those will go down. So there we are. We're set up at 5 8 above center. So now we've got, uh, besides a messy table, we've got uh, our string or our bow and a vise. Always use uh, leather when you do that. And I'm going to get a piece of serving string here. So um, just want a piece that's. You know, long enough that you can tie two knocking points on with, so that ought to be enough there. Cut that off. And then what I do is I take my serving wax, turn your flame on, and just heat it up. Just just get it good and goopy because you want you want to saturate the uh, the string and the when it's warm it just goes down in there a lot better so I pull it through pull it through pull it through over and over several times get white wax down in all the fibers of that string and what this will do is this will help you not only adhere when you're tying your knots and holding it in place when you're putting it on but it'll also uh, allow you to move it some. Now it doesn't matter which one you do first here. I'm just going to take this end off. Mask and tape. I can see kind of where I've got it here. And if you leave the other one in place, then you you know pretty well where you were tied. And then all I'm going to tie is overhand knots, but I'm going to leave one end quite a bit longer than the other, just long enough to just get an overhand knot, put it on there, and then go to where the bottom of your tape was. All right, nice and snug, loop it around underneath, tie another one, and this time we're going to, we're going to cinch it down above the last one, and you could get away with two, I put three, now this time we're going to tie a square knot at the end, so we'll put it on there, nice and tight. And then a square knot. We're going to take the razor and cut the running edge. Now I leave about an eighth of an inch out there because we're going to melt that and put it in. Uh, 
I know some of you are going, you need a new razor blade, Jimmy. You're, you're right. Um, so anyway, let's undo this one now. And the same routine with the bottom one. Down there. Overhand knot. Okay, so that's too tight. So we'll move down there. We go right in there. Or too close, rather. Get back over the top. Another overhand knot. Now, like I said, the beauty of this is you can you can screw these with the grain of the serving against it, and it'll go right into. Uh, it'll move up and down. Just minor adjustments. And then also, uh, for those of you that get in close to your face, you want to turn the knot, even though you burn it, turn the knot around away from your face so that the knot doesn't cut you, um, your nose, when you shoot the bow. So just spin it around to the back side. Now we'll burn those little, those little run tag ends and push them down to the string. They'll stick to it and adhere. We're ready to go.